Well, last November, the prestigious Journal of Neurotrauma published the preliminary results of the LSU pilot trial of hyperbaric oxygen therapy in blast-induced traumatic brain injury and PTSD or post-traumatic stress disorder. This study demonstrated clinically and scientifically significant improvements in cognition and simultaneous reduction of symptoms. So joining us this morning to talk all about this is LSU Health Sciences Center Clinical Associate Professor Dr. Paul Harch. Doctor, thanks so much for coming in. My pleasure. This seems to be a great advancement, especially for those suffering from PTSD and related issues. It is. I agree. Definitely. So tell me how this works and how did the study come about? Well, it works by using oxygen as a drug. Mm -hmm. We're using it to treat wounds in the body, and traditionally that's what hyperbaric oxygen has been used for. And really it's come about as the result of the last 23 years of work. Uh, late 80s, we discovered that we could treat our divers coming out of the Gulf of Mexico who had brain decompression illness or bends of the brains uh, with a different protocol than what the Navy had used, which wasn't working well. Mm -hmm. And uh, we then extended this to Louisiana boxers with brain injury and a variety of neurological disorders, children with cerebral palsy, autism, etc. And so over the years, I've treated quite a large number of patients with chronic traumatic brain injury. And in 2001, we went to Walter Reed and offered to treat some veterans. And long story short was it didn't come about until we finally decided that the only way to get this done was to have a formal study. And we went and raised the money for it from private citizens, foundations, military groups, and we did the study. And the results, great. So what's the yes. next step? What does that actually mean? Well, the next step is to publish the rest of the study. We've analyzed all of the data, and it's more powerful than this. And uh, we haven't um, formally analyzed the last imaging part, but I've seen all the imaging, and it's consistent with it. And so the next study is to get all of that published, or the next step. And then beyond that, we have a government appropriation to do a larger study. And that's what we're getting ready for later this year. And this is the chamber we're actually looking at here. Tell me yes. how this physically works. It's very simple. You lay on a stretcher. It slides in as you see the person there coming out. It slides in on rollers. You close the door. And you pump in oxygen. And it's at an increased pressure gradually. Eventually, you have 100% oxygen at increased pressure. And you lay there for the period of time, breathe that. <clears throat> Eventually, you bring the person out of the chamber, and uh, you do that repetitively, and it treats the problem. And that is just amazing, and we're going to take a look at some brain scans here in just yes. a second. How does it treat the problem? I'm really interested in this, because the power of oxygen is absolutely amazing when you think about it in its purest form. Can't live without it. Yeah. The substrate of life. And it turns out that uh, it corrects oxygen deficiencies. But it does it more than by just transiently supplying the oxygen so that the oxygen is there to metabolize. In fact, the, the center point of activity is the DNA of our cells. And what it's doing is stimulating genes that code for growth and repair hormones that then repair the wounds in the brain. And the other thing it does is it metabolically energizes the cells. So damaged cells start working better, growth and repair hormones are elaborated, and you grow new tissue. And we're looking at this right now for post-traumatic stress disorder and other blast-induced traumatic brain injuries, but this could correct. be used eventually down the road to treat a number of things, correct? Well, and that's what we've done for the last 23 years. Yeah. Uh, probably 70, 80 different neurological diagnoses we've looked at this in. Mm -hmm. And so what you saw there was the improvements in blood flow, global improvements in that uh, veteran's ve uh, brain before and after. All of the red is increased blood flow. And so this is really putting a spotlight on LSU. Is there research like this being done across the nation? How do we compare here? Uh, well, uh, we are way ahead of the curve on this, if you will. Uh, the, the military, based on these studies, is now doing some of their own. But there really aren't any others underway other than the national pilot trial that we set up based on, on my study here. So we're, we're out in front. Definitely. I want to know why? Clearly you're passionate about this. Why did you get involved and how? It was serendipitous. Um, I came into hyperbaric medicine as a novice and 
just ask the simple question, why are divers were not getting better as well and uh, to the same degree that the U.S. Navy said? The U.S. Navy said first treatment, 95% cure, and we were getting 40%. And I don't know, but that didn't seem to bother most of the people in hyperbaric medicine for the past three or four decades. And I, it sought me investigating this, and I found out that, in fact, by the time our divers come from the Gulf of Mexico, by land, maybe try to sleep off their symptoms, come in a day later, we're no longer treating what the Navy was treating. Mm -hmm. We are treating the residual effects of the bubbles, which are like mini strokes in the brain. And in a really desperate uh, situation, we had a commercial diver up in Picayune who was on his way to New Orleans to kill all of the diving accident management of one of the diving companies over his injury because they had told him there was nothing that could be done for it. It was essentially his fault, and uh, he was going to be like this for life. And he decided uh, he'd take things into his own hands. I ended up taking him, and we tried him on a different protocol, a lower dose of this, and lo and behold, he improved symptomatically on testing. Clinically, it was really pretty amazing. And that started us doing this to more divers, boxers, pediatric brain injury. And what we found was this is a generic drug for repair of brain wounds. Wow. And so uh, it changed my life. Uh, we could give people back their lives by restoring brain function. I was going to say, not only did it change your life, it clearly has changed the lives of so many people. Yes. What is your advice to someone if they are suffering from a traumatic brain disorder and they need help that they're not necessarily getting right now through their doctor? Or someone says, you know, we just can't help you. We try to encourage them to get this therapy wherever they can. So, I mean, this show, mm -hmm. wherever it is seen beyond our boundaries here, I tell people anywhere in the United States, and they call us every day, please go get this therapy. If you can't come here, get it locally. Mm -hmm. Try to get yourself in this lower pressure range uh, that seems to be so effective. Mm -hmm. So now working with more results from this and more studies, what is the next step for you all? Well, the next step, we are trying to accelerate this so that it doesn't go through the glacial pace of medical proofing and uh, elaborate, lengthy decades worth of studies. There's enough proof now to go ahead and just start applying this. Mm -hmm. uh, so we're eventually going to be working with insurance companies and others um, and also shed light on the information that shows that if this is done right at the time of injury acutely, we don't have to do all this treatment later. One, two treatments is effective, and this has been shown with severe brain injury. You can reduce death rate by 60%, and we're not using it. And we should be, clearly. We should be, yes. All right, Dr. Harch, thank you so much for coming in. We appreciate it. We appreciate the work you're doing as well. My pleasure. Thank you.